Hello. So, uh, David here. Uh, this is an addendum to getting along with a day Armand. Um, if you've listened to that episode, then you know there are a lot of things that uh, were very personal to me um, and another party that were discussed. And uh, I want to make this very clear. None of the things I discussed on the show were intended to hurt feelings or upset anyone. Um, the relationship I discussed is one that I is not one that I wanted to trash or uh, want to trash now. And I said what I said because I was angry. Um, I'm sure everybody can relate to that. Um, and you can definitely hear it in my voice during the episode. And it, as you listen to this now, I'm sure you can tell that I'm in a totally different state of mind. Um, as the last two weeks have passed, I didn't have the courage to listen back to the episode until this evening. Um, and I was concerned that I had been a lot more negative than I was. Um, but I, I actually think it wasn't quite as bad as I'd imagined. Um, except for the, you know, the, the aggression and anger that was in my voice. Um, so I want to be plain as possible and uh, have a level head on when I do this and lay out the truth as I see it, uh, which in this case will be a more rational, coordinated way. Um, so for the two of us, me and uh, the guy I've been working with, there have been gaps in communication, transportation, um, and living situation, and those were created and maintained by both parties that were involved. Um, as I said later in the episode, it's really important that um, you see things from more than one person's perspective, and that means that you know you could be able to put yourself in the other person's shoes. Um, being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes is tough, and obviously I failed to do so in the episode, which resulted in me sounding like an angry buffoon. buffoon. Um, as a testament to the theme of uh, the topic, I, I do want to um, touch on a few things in, in this uh, addendum. So, number one, it is important to remember that both individuals have to meet in the middle and be willing to work together, and that it is both parties' responsibility to make that happen. Um, and number two, that my decision to discuss this on the podcast was a stupid one. Um, and I think me having done it, like, now I understand that it's very difficult to put the genie back in the bottle, um, and it actually it may lead to better things um, if... I have a rational discussion with the other person and also if everyone kind of can take a step back when and apply this in their own situation and understand that, you know, um, going through a negative situation and then being able to sit down and have this discussion together um, can result in a better relationship between the people, even though it looks really terrible, like everything's going to break. You know what I mean? Um, so... Obviously, there is a much more responsible way to handle things than I did, uh, and that means to, uh, it, you know, the best way to do it is to sit down and have a discussion about the differences in the situation. Um, hopefully, it won't result in negativity, but if it does, at least you attempted to resolve things, and that's the best that anyone can do. So, I also want to take a, a further moment to address how things can move forward, both in my situation and for other people who go through these kinds of things. Um, every successful band, and this is the wisdom I want you to take away from this, every successful band has to find a balance between diversity and direction. Um, without combining genres, attitudes, subjects, and passions, music couldn't be what it is um, for you know bands throughout rock and roll's great history, right? Um, the last 50 years have resulted in some amazing music from some amazing people. Really, the last 75 to 100, almost 100 at this point. Um Without direction, people uh, won't be on the same page, which results in chaos and confusion. So when either of these items, either diversity or direction, um, is in too great a supply, things collapse and turmoil ensues. So you need to bring balance to the force, basically. Um, so if you don't believe me, I, I have a prime example, and that is Queen, a band known for um, its diversity in sound. Uh, you know, they, they mashed up opera, rock, theater... Um, and even the music of the Roaring Twenties. Uh, and they did that you know, throughout most of their career. They were known for doing that, and they were very successful at it. But there was a period in their career where they started to like deviate, and everybody was kind of going off on their own tangents, and everybody was arguing about who's going to have this many songs on the record. Because if you didn't know that about Queen, everybody got individual song credit. And there were, I think there were a couple songs that were attributed to Queen, the band, but like most of the music was either Freddie Mercury's or, or Brian May's. I think they got three songs an album, and then I think John Deacon and uh, uh, 
Roger Taylor got two songs on each album as well. Um, what ended up happening was that there were these infighting things going on because everybody wanted to you know do their own thing and like they they all were getting more money when they had writing credits so everybody fought and whatever um, and it, it, during this period when everybody was kind of like arguing about who gets writing credit and whatnot and how many songs they were going to put on the records and all that um, Freddie started to have uh, a friendship with with David Bowie uh, accounts vary as to how much that what that friendship actually was but basically they they started to be friendly and and actually david bowie came came and uh produced the album hot space hot space nearly broke that band because it was like the the straw that broke the camel's back everyone was kind of like you know back back to back and they were all facing away and they were all trying to walk you know and so they were just they were separating and I think it was that that studio experience and them realizing that with with a song like Under Pressure that was on that album, um, that that you know they, they brought in basically what it amounted to another front man, and suddenly it became clear that they were no longer Queen at that point. So uh, you can tell like from the from the albums further like their sound became a lot tighter and they were more interested in trying to do the same things. And I think a lot of the squabbling about how many, who got how many credits and stuff ended. Um, you can see that there's a, definitely a more consistent vision of their music at that point. So uh, the takeaway from the Queen story is that working together, which is what they ended up doing, uh, towards a you know a common goal, um, utilizing all the uniqueness of each individual, uh, yielded a powerful result. And that should be an obvious aim for anyone that listens to our podcast who plays in a band to try and achieve. So, um, consummate with this, like, I, I want to make take a brief moment and kind of give, like, an update of what's going to happen next for me. And, I, and I'm and i honestly not sure. Um, I don't know that I, you know, well, I do know that I can't put the genie back in the bottle, so to speak. And um, I do intend to enter... Uh, into a discussion with the party that I was talking about in the episode, but I'm going to do it this time with a rational, clear head, and we're going to talk together, and we're going to see what happens. Because ultimately, it has a lot to do with you know communication and um, just having a common goal. And I don't think I did a very good job of stating my goals, and I don't think I did a very good job of communicating myself. And I think that those things can can be improved upon. Um, does this mean that you know this is going to have a positive outcome? As I mentioned, you know, maybe, maybe not, could, couldn't, it depends. Uh, and ultimately, I will feel better about having had this discussion. Um, but it's just important to remember that, you know, things can often seem like you are in the right. And that you need to st- take a step back and try to see things from the other party's perspective. And then try to, you know, put yourself in their shoes. And it can yield, um, you know, some wisdom, which I think we should all be seeking, on top of the fact that, you know, maybe something good comes out of it. So, um, with that being said, I wanted to I wanted to issue this as a, you know, formal apology for some of my comments and for anybody who was offended, either, you know, the individual or anybody who listens to the show. Um, but I do want to make it clear, you should listen to that episode. You can learn a lot about conflict, especially in a band situation. And many of the things that Jim and I discuss weren't necessarily regarding this situation directly. But they touch on a lot of the topics that I think people could use in dealing with band situations. So uh, I appreciate anybody who took the time to listen to this addendum. Uh, hopefully uh, you can get something out of it. And, uh, yep, so uh, I've been David, the Practical Guitarist. Well, half of the Practical Guitarist podcast. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>